women to speak in the church. Now, there are some false teachers that are out there, some of these uh, wolves in sheep's clothing that are trying to say, well, Paul was just dealing with a particular kind of cultural situation there in Corinth. If you fall for that, you're going to live throughout the whole New Testament. Because there wasn't a bit of that that was written uh, in the 21st century. Every bit of that was written 2,000 years ago to people that lived back then. But the teachings are still relevant. The laws still hold true. And Paul still wrote that women are to be in silence when it comes to the public worship. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that they can't sing. We've already established the fact that they can sing. And they have to do that because that's the way God set up the worship of the church. And so they teach through the singing. However, when it comes to speaking out, when it comes to, uh, to uh, you know, blurting out your opinions or interrupting in some way, that is, that is certainly uh, prohibited here in this passage. Right after that, he said, If a man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him knowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. He said, This isn't just my opinion. I'm not just telling you what I think. I'm not some kind of male chauvinist misogynist. I'm telling you what God says. That's why we've got this instruction. God gives another important restriction uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Open up there if you will. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to back up here all the way to verse number 8 because I think it gives us some context. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 8, he says, I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. Sometimes brethren focus on the lifting up the holy hands. That's not what Paul's emphasizing. He's emphasizing the everywhere. This is not about worship service in particular. This is about Christian life in general. And what he says here, men can pray anywhere and everywhere and in every situation. They can lead in prayer. But then he says, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. That's what women do everywhere. Men can pray everywhere. Women can have good works everywhere. That's the way it's supposed to work. And then he goes on to say, in verse number 11, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man. That regulates the teaching of women. That's what keeps women getting up in our Bible classes and, and taking it over. That doesn't mean that a woman can't speak in Bible class. If a, if a teacher calls on her to read a passage or asks her what she thinks about a verse, there's nothing at all wrong with that. But if she tries to usurp that class and take it over, that's what that word means, usurp. Uh, it means to, uh, to dominate, to take it over. And uh, that's not what God wants us to do. Uh, God wants ladies to learn with a quiet meek, demure spirit. This word silence in this passage is a different one from the word, the original Greek word that was used over there in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14. Here it means quietness. It's the whole attitude with which women are to learn. This meek, quiet, demure spirit. So teaching over or usurping the authority of the man will go beyond that spirit. Usurping means to seize or to have dominion or be domineering. Somebody mentioned earlier, Judge Judy. She can be pretty domineering. <laughs> you can't have that attitude, ladies. And not over the men while they're teaching Bible classes. Because it doesn't matter what the setting is. That would, that would disregard this teaching, wouldn't it? Now, let me quickly say that there are a lot of areas that women cannot serve, okay? Women can't serve as preachers over men. They can't teach over them. They can't serve as deacons or elders. They can't be saw leaders or wait on the table. But none of that, none of that has to do with your worth, your ability, your talent, your lack of drive, or your desire. It only has to do with the roles that God gave to men and women. You may have unbounded ability to teach 
the Word of God? If so, you need to be teaching ladies' classes, holding ladies' days, teaching children. So many ways that you can put that to work. This is a matter of God-given rules. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse number 3 says, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of the Father. Does that mean Christ is worth less than the Father? No. Does he mean he's less powerful than the Father? No. It just means that he agreed to a certain role that was given to him by his Father. And that's the way it is with women in the church. Can they teach? Is it scriptural? Yes. And we need them to be teachers in the church. But they can't go beyond that which is written. You know, uh, in most congregations, women outnumber the men. That's the way I've seen it down through the years. In most congregations, the women outnumber the men, and sometimes it's that way when it comes to spiritual backbone, too. I have known congregations, small congregations out in the country, where it's all women. There was a little place where they would call every once in a while and get a preacher to come down when I was in preaching school, and when you went, you were the only man there. <laughs> You did all the preaching, laid on the table, led the song, and all the prayers. You did everything. But those were godly women there, standing up for the truth. Not a thing wrong with that. Women outnumber the men, no question. They are critical to the success of the church. And what we need to be doing is emphasizing the positive. I ran across this terrible website recently about people that were proud that they were ex-members of the Church of Christ. And those women that wrote on there said, they stifled me. They wouldn't let me use any of my talents. Brethren, that's not what we want to do to our ladies. Our daughter, ladies, we want to use your talents and abilities. We just have to do it within the restrictions that God gave us. Right. We can't go beyond what, the God, what God teaches. But we need you, we want you, and we appreciate you for all you do for the Lord. Thank you so much. Ladies, for all that you do, and thank you so much for listening in such a fine way today. Again, I appreciate this great congregation and the chance that you've given me here today. Thank you so much.